Wife of the President Aisha Buhari says the population of out of school children in the Northeast is disheartening. And Mrs. Buhari, who said this during the inauguration of her pet project, Future Assured Youth Education and Empowerment Program, aimed at training 750 young persons in Adamawa, said the situation required the government's urgent attention. She said, and I quote, the case is most disheartening in the northern states where insurgency, poverty and social cultural norms have played key roles in further worsening what is left of the ruins of dilapidated structures, insufficient and poorly motivated teachers at all levels, end of quote. According to her, education deprivation in northern Nigeria is driven by factors such as economic barriers and social cultural norms and practices that discourage attendance in formal education especially for girls. And joining me live in the studio is Kiari Bukar, who is the co-founder and managing director of Trans-Sahara Group. Good to have you this morning. Thank you. First of all, when you heard that news, what's your reaction? Do you uh, agree completely? Uh, totally. Um, education is actually not only something that is a fundamental requirement for um, kids or youth to for it, employability uh, and uh, getting out of poverty in the long run. Uh, education is a basic investment. Actually, education and healthcare are two uh, expenditure that whether it's state, local, or the federal government should look at it as investment rather than as a cost or an expense. Uh, the case in the North is particularly of grave concern because what we have is uh, there has been study done by um, Richardson, a, an investment banker, uh, who basically looked at 2020-year gaps mm -hmm. and looked at high school graduation rate. And what he has discovered is 42%. If any nation has 42% high school graduation rate, mm -hmm. and, the, and that nation is in a poor economic state, 20 years from that onwards, mm -hmm. that state will, uh, that country would graduate into middle income. Mm -hmm. Now, in the case of Nigeria, it actually reached that 42% high school graduation rate only in the 90s, late 90s, oh, wow. which means 20 years from the late 90s, that's mm -hmm. possibly around now, we should become a middle income nation. Unfortunately, we, we are, are tithering, not. we're struggling. And when you look at it, Nigeria is not a homogeneous country. When you look at it, starting from the Southwest, mm -hmm. and if you put like a ruler parallel to that and keep moving upwards, you find that Lagos is probably 95%, 99% high school graduation mm -hmm. rate. And then as you go Southwest, cover Southeast, South, South, the, the high school graduation rate begins to decline. Decrease. And then as you go up to the you know, central part of the country, it's around 70, 75. As you go further north, by the time you hit a place like Borno, mm -hmm. you are talking about 10, 20% graduation rate. So even within Nigeria, there are gaps. It's as if there are different countries. Within the different states. Within, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so that dislocation would also manifest itself 20 years from now, meaning that um, people in the Southwest would actually attain higher income potential than people, say, in the Northeast or the Northwest. And that, for that to be addressed by government, there has to be a purposeful, mm -hmm. deliberate plan for enrollment of children uh, in primary and secondary schools. All right, thank you for putting it in context in terms of you know the gaps that you have identified from that study from Richardson. Mm -hmm. Now, the uh, wife of the president, while talking about the issue of education, mentioned particularly, she attributed that to uh, social cultural norms. I know right. you're from the North. What would that imply? The social cultural aspect actually has to do with girl-child education. Uh, primarily people prefer to send their sons to school than the girls. girls. And uh, by the way, it is actually more important to have educated female right. uh, the, because that's half the society. Correct. If half of your population is not productive, you're in trouble. But the second thing is that uh, girl-child and then 
uh, of course, adult females uh, tend to be the custodian of the next generation. Mm -hmm. And if you have a gap there, then the gap is going to perpetuate itself. So the illiteracy, the uh, lack of exposure, and lack of even basic hygiene, and uh, you know, the, the list just goes on and mm -hmm. on. So there has to be some kind of incentive to convince uh, parents in the core north to actually enroll their girl child mm -hmm. children into uh, formal education. And finally, do you think we'll get to the point where in the core north, you know, people, leaders, traditional rulers, all those who are engaged, uh, stakeholders in the north, north, will come to the point where they feel we should change this uh, cultural system? For the narrative to change, I think we'd have to go back to the core African adage of it takes a village to raise a child right. and that has to be um, so there has to be a congruence mm -hmm. of that be a basic paradigm and basic belief uh, and once that is there then the traditional rulers governments and by governments I mean local governments state governments and the federal uh, and also stakeholders religious leaders uh, community leaders uh, social uh, civil society organizations and the rest you know, the list goes on. All stakeholders must actually come together, you know, face the same direction, mm -hmm. achieve, have the same goal, and then move in that direction. And with that, I would hope that the issues uh, that we've been talking about will be addressed mm -hmm. squarely. We can only hope. Thank you, uh, Mr. Carey, for your time now. Thank you, sir.